If you use ChatGPT every day, it already keeps a private dossier on you, your projects, your habits, and even your browsing. Most people think ChatGPT's memory are just those pieces of notes inside the settings page, but that's only the visible layer. There's a whole underlying memory stack that quietly steers how ChatGPT responds to every one of your requests. And that's precisely the reason why many of us have stuck with it, despite many equally powerful models dropping all year round. In this video, I'm going to tear down exactly how the memory stack works, how Atlas, their latest AI browser, further extends it, and then walk you through the workflows I use to exploit the system like a power user. I'm Ivan, and welcome back to Beyond the Hype. Let's quickly walk through the anatomy of a ChatGPT query. It includes the base system instructions, the tool definition, most importantly, your memory, and then finally, your actual query itself. And today, our main focus will be on the memory section. And that comes in three parts, and ChatGPT gives explicit instructions on how it should leverage each part of the memory differently, and we'll walk through them one by one. Everything I've shown here are extracted directly from conversations with ChatGPT through using specialized prompt. Should you want to try this yourself, links in the description below. Let's continue. The first section, so we have user controlled memory. All of this can be changed directly inside your settings page under the personalization tab. First thing you'll see is the bio. The information is simple. It stores your name, role, a short personal description that you provide, and that's it. The interesting thing is in the instruction ChatGPT is given. You can see that it's specifically told to not even acknowledge the existence of this section unless it's deemed relevant by the model. This is a recurring pattern that we observe through all instructions that ChatGPT is given during memory processing to ensure that it's only leveraging memories that are relevant while not polluting your final response. Most power users will be familiar with the next section, custom instructions. This is one of the few ways to truly shape ChatGPT's behavior. This is the key line to read. All of the following instructions should guide your behavior silently. Out of all instructions ChatGPT is given, this one is by far the one that's asking for the strongest adherence. So you can significantly improve your chat experience when you use this feature well. We'll talk more about this in the workflow section. So next part, most of you will be familiar with, saved memory, because ChatGPT gives it an explicit tool called bio.update. Yes, I know it's ironic that bio.update is not in use in the bio section, but this tool allows it to find information out while in a chat session and choose to persist it into this permanent store. You can also ask ChatGPT directly to list, remove, and update the memory in the store. Strangely, no explicit information is given to ChatGPT about how to leverage this section other than this section being named inside the instructions, model set context. I suspect OpenAI feels the name is so self-explanatory that the model will be able to guess exactly what it is even without further instructions. Now it gets more interesting on Gopic because ChatGPT also maintains its own image of you. And this section is called derived memories. OpenAI generates this in the background from your interactions with ChatGPT on the site and in the browser if you're using it. First, we have the user knowledge memory. ChatGPT builds up this profile throughout its conversation with you. It's also given explicit instructions to consider all entries in this section when creating a response to you. From the instruction it's given, clearly OpenAI wants ChatGPT to trust this section even more than the bio section. I've extracted the information ChatGPT had on me in this section. It definitely has a very clear profile of myself and way more detailed than what I've provided inside the bio section. And then to check which memory takes precedence, I set up some conflicting information inside my own user bio. Turns out it responded still to the preference stored in this section rather than what I've explicitly set inside the user bio. OpenAI clearly feels that we are very incoherent entities. Try asking ChatGPT this. How do you compare the person I say I am from my bio and the person that you know I am? And let me know if you get some strange and incoherent answers. The next three section includes data from OpenAI that's inferred from processing your browser history. 
This section only exists if you're using Atlas, their AI browser. There are three distinct categories of browser memory. First, we have major activities. You don't have to have explicit conversation with ChatGPT for it to get this information. It gets it directly from observing the pages that you visit, both the URL and the content on the page. Just like the user knowledge memory section, this summary is surprisingly accurate, but lacking in coverage. If activity is written down, we're definitely correct, but it only covered about two thirds of the things that I was actually working on. And then we also have the preferences and routine section. It's similar to the last, but just has more granularity. The upcoming events section excites me the most because this uses the browser context to try to guess your upcoming events. This is not just reading directly from your calendar or reading from your email, but trying to infer even the projects that you're working on and the things that you're likely going to need next. So with this, ChatGPT could suggest queries or even relevant context inside your conversation sessions, or maybe even in pop-ups inside the browser, even before you know you need it. So right now, this section is empty for me, but I'm looking forward to the potential. An important note on security though, as all of the data comes directly from your browsing history, not that you've explicitly sent that information to ChatGPT, it's definitely possible for malicious actors to prompt inject into your ChatGPT queries. We've all seen how information exfiltration could happen when that was executed correctly. Given that this memory is injected into every single one of your queries, the data loss could be quite significant. So OpenAI injects a very clear unsafe context tag directly surrounding all of the information it's injected in this section to make sure ChatGPT takes extra care when reading data directly from this section and preventing it from prompt injection. It's good to see that they are trying to work hard on ensuring security and convenience at the same time. User-controlled and derived memories are the long-lived memory set that persists even after you close your chat or even your browser. But to allow ChatGPT the knowledge of what you are actually working on and your recent focus is also given this short-lived working set, your recent messages, recent tasks, and some interaction metadata it uses to steer responses in the moment. This is the ephemeral layer. It doesn't try to define who you are, but just what you've been doing lately. First, it gets the recent chats, but only the messages that you've sent but not ChatGPT's response. Again, another example of how OpenAI is trying to do the context optimization here. If you also use the project feature, it will include the chat session by conversations had outside and inside the project. This allows ChatGPT to focus on work inside the project when necessary. This history is also capped at seven days or 30 conversations, whichever one is shorter. So for those of you who have a ton of information with ChatGPT, don't be surprised if it doesn't have a long memory more than a couple of days. Strangely, it's also not given a tool to search further back, unlike Claude. If any OpenAI engineers are listening to this, please go fix that. Additionally, if you're using Atlas, it also helpfully includes the current page and your selection as part of that context. They enforce the same kind of security with the unsafe context tag here to ensure your information is safe. And this is a core that powers the chat with tab experience that you have in the sidebar or the edit box that you have inside of Atlas. And lastly, ChatGPT is also given quite a few usage related data about us. Things like how many days have you been active over the past week, the past month, the average length of message you sent, the depth of your conversation and the length of your current session duration, and even your location. The model is not given explicit instructions on how to leverage this data though, but I would not be surprised if it had the intuition to just look at the data and decide whether the user is an unengaged user and then try to reactivate the user through perhaps flattery. That's a lot of information that's crammed into the memory section for ChatGPT. All of that gets combined then with your user query to create that uniquely personal response. And this is one of the key things that differentiates their products, especially from the likes of Gemini and Claude. Because when I looked into Gemini and Claude, their memory stack is way shallower than what ChatGPT provides. 
And this is one of the subconscious reasons why many of us are still sticking with ChatGPT, despite so many great models coming out throughout the year. That said, I'm very much looking forward to what Google is going to do here next, because they have so much data about all of us directly in their context, and it took them almost a year before they integrated the drive search inside of Gemini, which to me is absolutely bonkers. They have a lot of potential, but haven't done anything here yet. Now that we've seen how the memory stack is put together, we can use ChatGPT to make it deliberately feel like a proper long-term collaborator. The workflows in this section aim for three key benefits, less repetition, better calibration, and create more leverage over time. Let's jump into the first one. Custom instructions control how ChatGPT reads and applies your memory. As we all think and work differently, there's no reason to accept just the default behavior. You really should customize its behavior to serve your specific needs. For example, you can open up your settings page, go to personalization, check out the customer instructions. For me, I explicitly asked ChatGPT to reference past conversations for context if it's useful and try to infer my real underlying goal from broader chat history, not just the current message. Because I have a lot of ongoing chats, this lets it connect threads between them. Things like spotting patterns in my writing practice or linking a new idea back to a previous project. As always, the copy and pasteable prompts are linked in the latest issue of Beyond the Hype, link in the description. Next up, regularly curate the memory to keep it accurate. Because you can treat this like maintaining a code base. If underlying state is wrong, the behavior will be wrong. Because it's easy to blame the model, but a lot of time it's due to bad information or bad instructions you've given ChatGPT in your history. There are two areas where you can actively edit. There's the same memories right next to our custom instructions. There's also the browser derived memories. So here you can't directly add to this section, but you can delete things that it incorrectly detected. And unfortunately, you can't currently edit the upcoming events or the user knowledge memory section, the profile that ChatGPT has built up on you. So for the things that we can control, a simple workflow looks like this. Every few weeks, skim your memory and browser memories, remove anything that's clearly outdated and looks irrelevant. The cool thing is you don't have to do this manually. You can ask ChatGPT directly to help you do this curation. That said, it might take it a few rounds before it's able to do the full cleanup, but at least you don't have to deal with the interface yourself. Try this prompt to clean up your memory. Link in the description as well. For those internal memories that you cannot edit, the only option today, unfortunately, is to inspect them using the prompts I shared earlier and report the serious issues to OpenAI. I know it's not perfect, but it's better than treating the whole system like a black box. This complex memory stack makes ChatGPT uniquely special for each one of us and makes it so much harder for us to move off to another platform. Go try out those workflows and let me know how you find it improving your ChatGPT's performance. I would also say all AI SaaS would benefit from powerful memory systems like this. If you're one of those builders, check out my AI dev guides just up there. Until then, happy shipping and I'll see you in the next one.